everyone welcome to another edition of the nmtv talk show it's the pre-election season in nigeria and we are going to be talking a whole lot about it here in nmtv we'll be talking about the candidates and what we are expected to see happen for good in nigeria with that i have dr chris on set with me today okay. we would like to hear from you what is going to what you think is you know your views about the pre-election season in Nigeria, the candidates and all of that. So we'd like to hear from you on that. Thank you again, Dr. Nani, for having me. Thank you and welcome to the show. I am Dr. Nana. This is NMTV New York. Welcome back to the show again. It's been a while since we saw you last. Absolutely. I'm, As, very, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. As we know, a leader is as good as a people they and surround themselves people. with. Correct. So as a nation in Nigeria, we cannot continue to be the, the you know, the, the usual what has been happening in Nigeria. We need a change of direction, a change of course. We need to change the way we've been doing things in Nigeria. We need Nigerian to prosper not by binding and casting we need policies a nation is being ruled by policies policy makers when they make policies and put it before the uh, lawmakers and if it's abducted it becomes law of the land so that's how nations are being ruled so but for what is happening in nigeria is been so saddening and I have some videos that I'll be playing today. There's there are still some very good leaders that happen to be close to you, some of them that you know. And the majority of the leaders that Nigerians have had have been really terrible, especially this present administration that they are having now. So I want to talk to you about that and I want to hear your views on it and I will play some videos. There's this uh, ex-deputy governor to Peter Obi, uh, Mecca Sibian. So I'd like you to talk to our viewers a little bit about him because I was really, I was wowed actually when you spoke to me about him. And this issue came up when they started talking about Peter Obi. And because of the program, I had to call Nigeria to talk to people you know, just to do some survey and said, what is going on? And uh, I came to you and you talked to me about a uh, Mecca Sudan. So I want our viewers to hear who this man is and I will be playing some videos. So before I let you speak about him, I want our viewers to see this ex-deputy governor and what he's doing right now. This is the man. You recognize him, right? <laughs> Just like my father did for me. I am truly, I'm, I'm intrigued, and this is I, he wowed me. And this is not for show; it's real. 
So I like our viewer to see leaders. This is a deputy governor who served with Peter Obi between uh, between 2010 and 2014. It's not like in the 70s. And after he finished serving his tenure, look at what he is doing. This is amazing. And I would like the youth of Nigeria to see these are the kind of mentors that they need. If we want to have a good nation, these are the kind of people that we need. So that's why I'm playing this video for our viewers to see. And thereafter, I would like to hear from you. There's no hand gloves. My viewers, I hope when they see what they are, they see so. This is now former deputy governor to Peter Obi. In fact, it was because of him I started talking about Peter Obi. Because a, a leader is as good as the people he surround himself with. If this man was Peter Obi's uh, deputy and this is what he's doing, then, then that tells you a little bit about who Peter Obi is. So, this is amazing. don't know how Nigeria will not be good if we have this kind of people. Look at him. In his farm, right? And it's not for sure. He's not for sure. This is real. I truly wanted to play this video for our viewers. Because these are the unsung hero of Nigeria. If every leader can do this, I don't know why we will not move forward as a nation because this is what is happening in the US. If you finish your tenure, you fall back in line. Many of the ex governors are the one coming to CNN to use their expertise to do analysts. They don't go and sign up and be writing uh, former ex whatever. They just fall back in line. That's exactly what this man did in Nigeria. His children must be very proud of him. His wife, I commend her as well. A lot. For every successful man, there's always a woman behind. Well, uh, if I may come in, um, again, I will lift from most of the things that you say, Dr. Nana. And uh, one of the things you always say is that... Um, I will Let me just pause it. Then we'll go back to the studio back. Then I will do this. Again, like I was trying to say during the uh, uh, when you were showing the video, um, you always said that uh, uh, you can't give what you don't what have. you don't have exactly. And uh, am I supposed to be surprised? Uh, absolutely not. I know the man a maker and do BC Sube. Uh, he was my uh, childhood friend and uh, my leader when we were in school i have always known him to be an exemplary gentleman but again you only give what you have yes, if you see his person and the way he conducts himself even in that short videos you will see that this is inherent in, in him. him it is what must have been passed by his father, father. To him, exactly. uh, it is not something that he's doing for shows, and he's been a real man, the man that true to his own person. He has never been somebody that acts another person. He's not a typical politician. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was a little bit surprised when I heard that he was in politics as deputy governor. But am I surprised that I got to that position? You know, you cannot. They say goldfish. They don't hide. They don't know hide. So the person um, Peter Obi must have uh, seen the work, the person he is, and he wanted to succeed. That's why he fished him out and allowed him to be his deputy. Obviously, from the way he retired and went back to farming, 
and he's doing it natural, like you see. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you that it's not somebody that is seeking power attention. or attention. That's right. When we were in school, he single-handedly started the Man of War organization in, in the old Bender State University in those days. He single-handedly went to the government and got all the resources that we needed to ground that organization. He single-handedly convinced and made people like us uh, to begin to believe in that principle of um, growing up as good leaders. Uh, he, I would say, mentored a lot of young people, even as a child. As and he's still doing man, it right now. And he had, I, I saw a lot of uh, young people obvious. in his uh, farm. Up till date, as I speak to you, I hardly am able to call him his name because he was my CNC. Yeah. We we'll call them Commander in Chief. And I still call him Commander in Chief. We still greet each other. And as humble as he is, he will return back the accolade. That's right. This is a very, so what very I want our viewers to know leader. about mm -hmm. leaders like him is that these are the kind of leaders Nigeria need. Absolutely. A leader that is dear to serve and then go back to where he's supposed to be. Not a leader that will be there and be serving themselves and continuously. And that's what we have had so long. So there's another video I want to share with our viewers because of the atrocities that is going on in Nigeria and truly it, this is not something those days they said the evil that men do live after them but now the evil that men do actually is living with them now so if what they are saying the allegation they are saying about the aquarium model is true and that is truly debilitating and this that would be really something that is of another cause so that i want to share it with our viewers what i heard about the allegation you also hear about this president Ike Kuramadu and his wife Beatrice have been remanded in the UK well. after being charged with conspiracy to arrange uh, to arrange or facilitate travel of another person with a view to exploitation, namely organ harvesting. A couple was arrested two days ago and arraigned today at the Oxbridge Magistrates Court, which has adjourned the case until July 7th. 2022. The UK media has been awash with bad stories about the intent of Senator Kweramadu, who was said to plot to traffic 15 year old boy to the UK and harvest his organs to give their oh daughter, God. who has kidney failure, before being arraigned, uh, arrested at the Heathrow with £20,000 in cash. The child is now set. So I will stop you right there. I'm sure you heard a bit of what. Yes, um, I, I'm listening a little bit to that news, and um, uh, a few things surprise me these days about news coming out of Nigeria and the leadership, uh, in the sense that this is somebody who I read has been in the Nigeria legislative arm over for 20 over years. 20 years, and he's been uh, the second in command hmm. for a very long time in the Senate. He's made a lot of money. He has been in. You talked about policy. 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 You said uh, people make policies, mm -hmm. design them to uh, help make the society better. That's right. But in the case of Nigerians, the policy that they have going in, the seemingly, because I'm not sure it's everybody. Obviously, with Peter B and uh, my good friend. Uh, makers will do you will say that there are a few of them that are still good mm -hmm. but if you see most of these people who come to rule and you can name them from the beginning to the end they will come in there all they do is acquire enough wealth for themselves and then they don't care about any other person uh Ekwerimadu has been in a position to be able to make policies that will bring good hospitals to nigeria, to nigeria. but apparently at the time and even up to the time he took that young man to London, he probably did not see a need for it because he didn't need it. It did not affect his family. Yes, so if people have this vision and they think ahead that things change, life happens, and one day these things that you read about may happen to your family, 
they will make better policies but what they do is that they just get there they don't do anything they keep packing this money and taking care of themselves and i even read that even as he took that young man to london and the gorgans did not match he was trying to take him back home he was trying to return he the young man back even, to nigeria uh, allow him to stay in london there so he, and i mean for doing that favor, favor from so him. apparently they must have lied to the boy and that's why they thought nigeria uh, uh, all this uh developed country their rules are malleable like they do in nigeria they can bribe their ways through and cover because they are big boys but over there they don't do those so he found the hard way that things like that that he does in nigeria and they even uh, uh, greeting baba really baba it's not going to happen in england so it's learning the hard way and i hope the remainder of them in the house who are in position right now governors head of state commissioners ministers that can make effect policies to change the system and make things available in the system can begin to do it you don't get the respect that you get in your own country outside the country so it baffles me that yeah they don't try to improve the society of nigeria where they receive the accolades where they receive respect in fact they do the opposite they do exactly they go the most of them have their investments in south africa they have the investments in england in sweden in switzerland this is exactly and at the end of the day if the uh, if they have problems they run to nigeria exactly. and then they lose all those things there are so many resources from nigeria somebody was saying before i came to the program that um, nigeria discovered oil hmm. in 1959 uh, 10, 10 years ahead of uh, dubai where everybody go for tourism ahead, in nigeria yeah. now so dubai and the people they discovered or 10 years after nigeria and invested in tourism now tourism is paying the bills for dubai they are no longer dependent on only oil but what is the case nigeria oil is not depleted all the resources are in the hands of individuals nigeria has not been able to even say this is what they did ordinary electricity that runs in ghana every day 24 hours Electricity that we supply to Benin Republic and they have steady electricity we don't have. We cannot even stabilize it using Nigerian resources. People who are against those policies to bring light. Let, with that light, what can you do? What can you do? I was discussing with my friend uh, Joe in Port Harcourt uh, last week and he said to me that Nigerian uh, lecturers are lazy. And I told him, I said, some of them are telling me that they don't have electricity to run computers and run generators. They don't have the money. So that's why they cannot engage in academic exercise like Nigerians outside. Because we don't Nigeria. find their research anywhere. So now, people who are in charge of that, making money off of it, you know how many people die because there's no light? If there was light, arm robbery will reduce. Exactly. Because not everybody wants to be caught on camera. That's Still, right if there was light accidents will reduce because there will be road there will be street lights that will lighten the system if there was light people in the village will have uh, electricity to run their uh, machineries exactly. and their farming uh, their farm product the will electricity be has electricity been is, down. is a bedrock, it's a bedrock for, for development for any society. but that's what mr atiku abubaka who who held it down because of his He's, he's a lobbyist. Yes. He's someone who has interest in the generation supply to Nigeria. It's, it's so ridiculous. People who Nigeria is supplying light from Nigeria have electricity around us. But um, Nigeria cannot yeah. have electricity because of that uh, article uh, effect. Yeah. So he's brightening the now system. What and if, and I now he wants there. to come and I was move. coming there because I was coming there because um, I was going to share, although I shared it in my previous uh, episode, with my viewers that uh, uh, Peter Obi is a Sijin and uh, Atiku is a generous. In my view, I just felt that that was uh, a fallacy because if uh, Peter Obi is Sijin, he's Sijin for good. You don't expect somebody like uh, a Mecca Sibel dude who is farming with his sons and all that to be so generous with the yam that he's harvesting and be giving it all over the place because he worked for that. But what is generous? What, what I know. The source of that uh, information is 
questionable because somebody like would Father you want me Ndaka, to, would you, Ndaka, let me play what's his with name? Umbaka. Uh, would Umbaka. you want me to play the video? Absolutely, of it's good for your okay. viewers. My to viewers see. to see it again here. So let's share it because uh, he's saying that uh, Peter will be his, uh, his, uh, his uh, team. Peter will be his uh, father's comments stating that they are a clear violation the provisions of the canon law which forbids priests from engaging in partisan politics. Dr. Abati. For years. All he knows is his stomach. He is someone that's a corrupt man on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. They refuse to call him down because he's wearing the clergy of Catholic uh, cloak. The people feel that Catholic, yeah, there are Catholic priests who are good. Mm -hmm. But this man has been associated with corruption. Is the one that will go and see false prophecy engaging in dubious practice from the pulpit of uh, the altar of Catholicism. You understand? So this so man is controversial. Is that, uh, How can a man who works for his daily bread mm -hmm. come and be dashing you money like people who extort money from people? Yeah. Uh, and if because he didn't give you money, you say God told you, you will not win. This is how they deceive the masses. Mm -hmm. So people should disregard people like Mbaka mm -hmm. and people like them who will come out and begin to predict very soon. Yeah. So they will begin to predict that this man will win. Because they really way. want to Nigerian play God. Nigerian youths are ready for the change. All they need is for us to educate them the proper way to carry out the change. For me, like I've watched your program where you said Tinubu is uh, one of the people that we would have considered. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Tinubu has done something, he has something to show in Lagos and the people he has mentored, including the current vice president. He mentored them. A leader produces the next generation of leaders. And Tinubu, I'll give him to that. I give him that. He produced people, men who are leaders now, mm -hmm. even though they are not performing. But he also performed in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And for that, I would have gone for him full trot, full trotters. But the problem I have with Tinubu's candidacy is that age and health may be catching up with him That's otherwise right. i would take him over anybody right. as for for that reason i am also looking at peter obi mm -hmm. especially because of my friend mm -hmm. that i know has worked with him and i know that if he can find my friend and work with him in the past he's probably somebody who will surround himself with, with wise people. people and mm -hmm. good people like my friend the maker in the bc my cnc That's right. Oh, thank you so much for what you have said so far. And looking forward, the issue in Nigeria that this, um, uh, the Koremando, the uh, and the all other youths, you know, in the past we are, are actually advocating for youth, but some of the youth are truly now very dubious. So we would like to talk to them because what they are doing, harvesting organs and all of that, it, it should not be the, the way to the top. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nana. And that is why people say, do not light the fire because you don't know the extent it will burn. Some people that, people started this business. Young people in a society where people like Ekoremadu took away the hope. Hmm. They did not provide job. They didn't make policy to improve people's life. They did not provide health, they did not support health industry. They didn't do anything. So where children have no hope, and they see that people like Ekurumado are trafficking. Think that that's how people make money. And when you leaders are there to mentor followers, especially the young ones. So your life, somebody who sees the life of my friend, Emeka Ndubisi Sibeudu, farming, and young people around him learning from him. You think, like you said, you argued in one of your programs, you think youths that follow somebody like that mm -hmm. would think of uh, killing, some, yeah. killing people or doing all this crime. No, they want to make the money they know the normal the way. way. They know that when they produce those things, they will, this is the labor, this is the reward for the labor of their hands. But people who look at the Korimadu doing all these things and getting to the top with it, they want to go the other route and there's no hope. They will say, okay, I want to be like this man. And that's why crime is multiplying in Nigeria. These crimes gen uh, originated from the core, from the leaders of the past. Some of them engaged in it in a minute way. Now the youths are taking it in a uh, technology generation to the highest level. That's what we are having now in Nigeria. It will take a revolution like that one that they, they are working now with Peter Obi to change the system. And I, I urge all Nigerians to come out and support Peter Obi. If he's the only one, I'm not seeing anybody again. 
I just believe that somewhat with people around him, like Emeka Sibodu, I think there will be change that will be serious in Nigeria. Thank you very much. So with the available data, because this one, I really want you to put it out there, even to the PTLB or, you know, people in Nigeria, what actually they should be looking up to. Because with the available data, Nigeria is the most populous black nation with over 250 million you know and they have we have a population growth of over 2.5 percent annually and the youth without job is over 33 million so what do you think where do you think somebody like it will be now let's assume he's the president where, where would he start from please thank you for that question and i'm happy i'm glad that you brought it up first two things two things need to be the genesis of development of revolution of change in nigeria and they are electricity 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 then nigeria need to after stabilizing electricity and cutting off the hands of people like atiku from holding back electricity supply to nigeria then you have to know the number of nigeria Data. They need to have a data of the true people. How many people are like in Nigeria? Exactly in Nigeria? All these Ghana. numbers you mentioned, you if you look at, if you take a quick peek at research on Nigeria, you see researchers, including myself, quoting from 180 million to some up to 280 million. That's right. So nobody knows the exact, the exact population. population, and that's Nigeria. why when people are missing, there's no data. If you are going to uh, have to start to be serious with the country, have a data that captures the actual number of people. We estimate that youths are that much, like uh, the, the millions that you just quoted, mm -hmm. but the youths can only be taken care of if we know the number of youths. Right. So data, you build on those data so from generation to say generation. 33 million, Let me give you just one simple million. example. Somebody, I was reading that they could not find a Tinubu's uh, Y result. And also read that uh, they said the uh, uh, Governor Okowa of uh, Delta State, they cannot find his uh, Y result. I bet you that if they go to Y today, you cannot find uh, the documentation. There's no records. Maybe those records that are there in those folders, they are all gone. They've been chopped away, weathered data away. So they need important. to work on our data. Then we can begin to clean the system. People who die will be captured. People who are born are captured. People who are living and doing different things are captured. Then we'll be able to know unemployed number. So announce after that data that Peter Obi should work on, the next place to invest in is small business. Small in Nigeria, small business. Small business, if you go into research, you see is the is the, the is, engine is the engine of, of every economy, society. including yeah. the United States. Exactly. They are the people who employ the highest number of people. That's right. So to help the youth, we need to empower the uh, small business, small business sector. sector. We need to begin to work with youth from the time they are, they are leaving college. From that national youth program, we need to begin to, the ones that read professional courses. We need to begin to empower them to go into small businesses in the area of their specialization. How can an electric, electrical engineering professor not be able to design a system, a generate light. generator that will bring, not generate the system that will supply him and his neighbors light for a fee of a token? How can a University of Ibadan not be able to supply light generate light from UI mm -hmm. to supply the whole of Agbowo and Bodija around the battle day for a token of that will that will run the university. This is how you generate okay you are you have electrical engineering, you have electrical electronics, it does not cost much and more so the international bodies that sponsor all these research projects. Mm -hmm. The reason Nigerian professors are not taking it is because they don't want to do the work. That is attached because nobody gives you money without you doing the work. Everybody wants to invest into research into the future. Today, I know you have had that people are discovering a solution to cancer now. That's right. It's because people invest into it. There are big money bags 
I want to invest into research. But, but you will be ready to ready do to the do work. work. I think another you started well because the main thing that I actually wanted to the know the reason why some of these professors are not able to do what they are supposed to do is this electricity. Electricity is there, laziness is part of it. Nigeria academic system, like my good friend uh, Dr. Okavwe will argue, is was uh, built to uh, to to to, form, to uh, cater to the colonial masters uh, designs. So they design it to to for work clerk. for colonial people, and most of the design are not to benefit our development in future. That's right. You know, so we need to start all over again we need to empower in america you see all the diversified way america is not run the educational system in america is not run by the federal government no, it's not. it is run by states, by states. and their governments uh -huh. and the organizations uh -huh. so nigeria can lift from that there's nothing like uh, asu is on strike because federal government is not paying them mm -hmm. they should be able to sustain themselves somewhere like Ekuma, where i got my first degree they can generate light they can produce food they have agricultural department they can produce food that we serve. There is, is a farm, agrarian area, including where you are from. But they, they cover, they should be able to cover that. Those are farming environment. It, do you, you think know? the federalization of everything in Nigeria is bad? It's a problem. It's a big, it's a big because, problem. Okay, it's a that's big what problem. I wanted to say. Yes. So, in, in, in going forward, as far as this electricity is concerned, because this is the major thing they have, you know, here where we live, it's private electricity if you go to queens another private if you go to brooklyn like that different so do you think privatization will work absolutely because why if you why have they not done it because of people like Atiku, because of uh what do you call them uh, these people lobbyists people who lobby around government after they left government they stay in abuja the office of the former s s deputy governor from 1950 something lobbying and pressuring people not to do the right thing so if peter will be will get there mm -hmm. he need to work to see like just like obas enjoyed it he refused at the point that it became a shame to the government that everybody is having phone mm -hmm. and we don't have phone. obas enjoyed decided that he must have phone. he was able to uh so remove privatization, the, will, privatization help. will help in everything because i don't i can't invest in something that will not make money That's right. and to make money i will make it function efficiently I will employ the right people. I will support you with the right resources. I will educate them. And that's how you make the system strong. So if they privatize the electric electricity, privatize uh, everything, almost everything, even water. The reason water why the banking system is working is because it's not run by federal Thank government. you. Yes, exactly. It's, so so privatization that means they is actually know what to do and they are not doing it. They are not doing it because of what? People like these lobbies, a Atiku. set of people, Atiku and the and his acts, who are holding back sectors from moving forward. If the government wants to do something, they go and uh, find a way. They have been in the government. They know what to do. They block the team. How can Nigeria be in, among the nations that don't have light? At least in the major cities. Yes, light. If there's no light in every country has where there's no electricity. electricity. But in Nigeria, how can it be? that Lagos, Abuja, Benin, those kind of places will not have steady electricity. Yet, Benin Republic and Togo that will supply like they have and steady Ghana. electricity. And this, Ghana has electricity sustained electricity. We promote this database. You're Absolutely. You they promote technology. Data. We don't even know how many people are dying every day in Nigeria. Dr. Nana, there is a database. young man in worry that I watched was able to develop this uh, thing we are saying they should use to monitor Drone. drones. He did it from hard labor and just, he didn't even complete his school yet. So those are the kind of ingenu uh, ingenuousness that will come out if there's electricity and learn how to do all these things, where they can educate themselves, where they can find, know that the resources they have, all the things they are throwing away are useful for producing products. You know, these are the things that the government needs to do. We need to empower our people to be able to uh, get to the next so advising them Peter that. Obina where he need to start from without electricity one electricity the second thing capture the data of uh, improve the data of Nigeria even uh, the the, uh, the American and uh, Nigerian house here mm -hmm. they have no data 
how can you go to uh, Nigeria as they say they don't have up to now as well. Five months after, I've not got it. That's There's right. no paper. There's no, they don't know the number of Nigerians here. So we cannot even so vote from our every agency is just not... If they, they have good data, people living outside uh, Nigeria will be able to vote in Nigerian election. Why do you do that? The rigging will just come from abroad. They will just change all the people and say that everybody voted for one candidate or the other. So that's why we cannot do it. We need to work on Nigerian data. Everybody that is Nigerian or Nigerian uh, descent have to be read, known by Nigerian system. And the worst thing they are doing is to to, to give a third party. Like I know they were giving uh, the contracts to country. other countries to capture our data. That's like selling your country. Look at what the Chinese are doing now in Nigeria. In Nigeria. So we need to begin I played to work that on video this. for my viewers in my previous episode. If God does yes. it, anybody who wins, either Peter will be or Tino, I am asking and pleading to them that they should start with electricity. electricity. It is embarrassing. With electricity, people will begin to buy cameras. Nigerians, right. they will put cameras, security camera, security will improve. That's right. They will begin to install, uh, they will begin to do drones. Mm -hmm. They will can fly. And because this Richard Killings is know? prosperous because there's no electricity. There's no electricity. People can hide away and hide. Even if there's electricity, all, all, the all, all the rest, they can cut all it down. Will cut that. You know, and the crimes will reduce. Arm robbery will reduce. Because well, something, when people know that you are on the phone, even as they are robbing, you are carrying them on YouTube. Maybe you are alive. They will not want to rob you because somebody will know them. Thank so, you so much. I think you are, we have that. really uh, discussed uh, today. And I also want uh, Peter Obi or whoever is going to win. If it's him, we will be glad because we need a, a face of change to start with this electricity thing. And it can invest so much in uh, these drones mm. because with the drones, all of these things will be reduced so we we'll have to work on our data uh -huh. they need to capture data the data of nigeria is embarrassing when we do research we don't have exact number yes. of what nigerian nigerians are uh -huh. you know and what we some research we say 200 million some will say 250 million yes. so we don't really know the exact number that oh, the youth over 33 million not having you know so we, the research are not clear so we need to start from the electricity part so we can have our database so when we have the Nigeria. database then we'll begin to build other things on that mm -hmm. you know we'll begin to work on technology we'll begin to work on all these things we have to get serious the agencies have to be revamped because what is happening in all the agencies is just absurd and privatization privatization we have decentralize everything mm -hmm. let people invest when people invest into all these companies they will allow it they to run it efficiently they succeed. want it to be successful uh -huh. so they will do the right thing mm -hmm. and then we can sustain the economy small business is a powerful tool for uh, right. running the engine of, of the any economy so they should invest in small empower small uh, youth coppers to go into small business especially the professional ones mm -hmm. engineers uh, architects and all those small small things that can also in turn employ people even here they have doctor's office you know they are like small business yes, so those ones employ two three staffs that's taking they are employing people so we have doctors let us improve the uh, uh the, this thing not let us not centralize the ubth is run by government everybody uh uch is run by government that's why everything is run by that's government so we centralize them. everything that's why it's not going well but there are big men who can buy into those things mm -hmm. get share in it and begin to develop them and then run it efficiently. Nigeria engine will boom again. Amen. So I, I just want to thank you for coming in today. And in closing, I like I said, I tell on I say I could speak small, small uh, broken English where I feel too for here. My people I did tell on I say this election now will feel take you to uh, change some things for Nigeria. Colonial master not will come again. The only one if na no do well na Chinese na they will be the colonial master and uh, Russia. British no will come back. So we don't want any more colonial master. So we want them to because it's so painful that some people are saying they should come back because uh, of what is happening in Nigeria. So but all of that we can change it. Yes. If we put the right uh, uh, leaders in a position. If we have somebody like a, a team, um, uh, Peter Obi now, that's a new face. So maybe he's actually ready to do something good. 
based on what we know of uh, his former deputy and how much they said he left in the coffers of uh, Anna Brastit. Thank so you. we think that he can do uh, make a change. Thank so you, I tell Una say make Una go make Una ready to vote for this election so that things could change for us for Nigeria. Nigeria and we all know. I we I we go out and vote <laughs> the right people and make sure say Una they hold them accountable Simple. too. Not just to vote for them and then begin to uh, call them Babari Babake. When they do the wrong thing and things are not moving, you should be able to protest. Protest until they make the change they that you need. When a House of Assembly members don't do the thing we well send them go do, they go they read themselves. Mm -hmm. Make una go to their office for their place mm -hmm. and vote them out. Okay. Yes. So now so we could do and I thank Una for listening to us today. And uh, I hope see Una they hear what you did tell Una. We will see Una again very soon. Thank you all for watching and I will see you back here uh, soon. As always, we always tell the youth enough of this uh uh, crime. uh crimes that is going on in nigeria nobody they survive on crime where you go to say you go feel go, go sleep and you go you go they get peace of mind you know makes sense what do we do what do we have to do be seen to change the government which is ready for now to change this 2023 where they come thank you for listening and i'll see you back here again take care now and bye for now <laughs>